the continued push for a referendum. Uh, we have seen the Pukuza Mzigo initiative. We also seen governors talking about Gatuzi initiative. And now we are also hearing about the BBI. Uh, the former prime minister is on record saying that a lot is coming from the BBI report, which will effectively lead to changes in the constitution. So those are some of the issues that we want to look at this evening. And of course, like I'd mentioned, our guest in studio is ANC Chairperson Kelvin Lunani. Welcome to KBC. Asante. Let's talk about the push for a referendum. Do you think we need to change our constitution? Uh, on my position uh, individually <coughs> and uh, the party, uh, the party uh, position, Yes. I think if you look at what Kenya are going through, it's not uh, the right time actually to subject Kenya into heavy expenditures like that. Because mm -hmm. uh, if you look at, uh, we have had expenditures of uh, the Uduma number, mm -hmm. of which we've not known the results. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've, we've just had a census of which I don't know whether it's really successful or not successful, because mm -hmm. there were hinges here and there. Uh, so in the whole perspective, if you look at it, it's like, um, it's not the right time for a referendum. Two is like, uh, if you talk about the BBI, yes. then uh, to my understanding, the BBI was uh, formed at least to look into the hatred. Uh -huh. yeah? The hatred uh, between communities, why is it that after every election we have to have vi uh, some violence, we have to have people denying uh, the results and all that. Yes. So to me, it's uh, an elephant we've not looked into. Uh, and we wish that uh, BBI should move very fast and give the report to the public so that maybe people can go through the, the, the report and uh, see where they can contribute. Mm -hmm. What about, you know, the, the, the Punguza Mzigo bill, which is currently before the county assemblies? Do you think perhaps it is going to offer the solutions that Kenyans are looking for in terms of reducing the wage wage? Not really, because if you look at uh, Punguza Mzigo initiative, you see, there are so many un, untouched or uh, mentioned. Uh, you, if you don't talk about women, you don't talk about children, you're not talking about such a thing, uh, some things, then I think uh, it, it, it's not uh, the right thing. And I don't see it going anywhere because uh, so far they have not even attained about 18 or 15 uh, counties. Uh -huh. mm. Why do you think there's laxity in the public in terms of trying to, you know, to embrace this particular bill? You know, Kenyans have gone through a hard time, yeah? You remember before uh, the current constitution, Kenyans went through a lot. Uh -huh. There were campaigns all over, there were, people were taking sides and all that. You remember we had just had a constitution uh, where we had no and yes. Uh -huh. uh, initially, in the first government of Kibaki, uh, that the constitution was shut down, then it came the second term, uh -huh. where um, uh, Kenyans voted uh, uh, the orange, uh, uh, the yes, and um, it's too soon to have another referendum. I think Kenyans now are getting tired, because you see, even the, the, current, the current constitution, yeah, it's not been fully I implemented. Uh -huh. If you look at uh, devolution, where my party stands in for devolution, uh, we feel uh, there's some obstacles for devolution. Uh, it would be very important for the current government to try and uh, make sure that uh, devolution is really gotten to the roots. What are these obstacles that you feel have not been achieved in one, one basically is that uh, you see it was to devolve power and finances. Yes. And if you look, we just had a statement the other day where, <coughs> where the, the governors are complaining. You the know? division of revenue bill you mean? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the, this delay of disbursement of the, 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 the money and all that to there are no proper measures uh, to make sure that these devolved uh, finances are really put into proper use. Mm -hmm. So I think those are things the, the current government really need to look into. And uh, Kenyans are feeling, they're a little bit disappointed. They feel and believe that uh, the government is not really doing a lot to make sure that devolution works. Because if you look, uh, you find almost every governor, yeah, is accused of having swindled money and all that. Uh -huh. It's corruption, left, right, center, huge money is being lost. And um, Kenyans are, are, are taking a back to, to try and understand what's really happening. Because there's no governor who's really been taken to a task, no officers who have been really taken for a task. Yeah? Uh -huh. And uh, maybe taken to court and uh, cases concluded. Uh -huh. I think these are things that are, are really 
making Kenya to wonder like, what's up? Mm -hmm. What's the government doing? Mm -hmm. So the current government is a letdown to Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Today we've just seen, you know, the, the senators saying that they want Governor Mutu arrested for failing to honor summons, uh, you know, by the Senate in terms of answering audit queries at the, at the Senate level. And that is something that we have seen happening. Most governors not wanting to appear and answer to questions in the Senate. Do you think it is prudent for them now to take this kind of action and say, now we are going to get you arrested? You know what, my sister, what I'd really uh, like to put some emphasis is, um, you know, law is law. And... Uh, Kenya as a country, we are guided by law. So if you, you get summons and you don't at, attend the summons, you prefer maybe to do a trip abroad as an excuse. These are things that the Senate needs to stamp its feet down and uh, let the uh, DCI or DPP take action against this because we will not keep on uh, having musical chairs uh, over the co corruption issues because Kenyans are, are now uh, heavily paying through taxes. Uh -huh. Left, right, center, you find KRA is on people's neck and all that and they're collecting money. So it, it, gets, it gets worse when we hear of uh, somebody is not ready to go and face uh, the Senate committee to, 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 to answer the questions. Uh -huh. mm. So what really is the problem? Is it that the governors are not spending the money as they should or the money is not sufficient to carry out the projects? Basically, I would say there's some kind of impunity in this country that needs to be brought to an end because uh -huh. uh, the governors are not above the law. And uh, it, it should be made so clear that if you are summoned, you should be there like yesterday. You should be ready to answer. And if you are avoiding uh, some things, then um, that makes Kenyans raise more, more questions. Uh -huh. Yeah, The other day you had there was a, an office burnt in Busia. Yeah. Uh, Busia County and all that. So I believe uh, the agents involved should move fast. And two, the government is also, uh, the government is not really been hands on because if you look at uh, the judiciary, uh -huh. the ESCC, DPP, they are not really being the Auditor General's office, they are not being given the sufficient budget to enable them handle all this at once. Uh -huh. yeah. But are they, you know, handling themselves well? Because we've seen the judiciary, like you just indicated, uh, pointing out that uh, the judiciary being accused rather of not doing their job in terms of making sure those governors or MCS or CECs who were men should actually answer in law. You see, it goes back uh, to the point of impunity, yeah? uh -huh. where you find some judges, not all, some are rogues, and uh, no actions are being taken. Uh -huh. uh, that's why we say uh, uh, that all, 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 all stakeholders involved in this, they really need to be straight and be firm on, what, on, on, on their duties. Because uh -huh. you find like the DPP taking uh, 20 people to court uh -huh. over the same matter. I mean, if you look into it in the end of the day, even those who are supposed to be state witnesses, they are put on the other side as they are accused. And uh, it gives maybe the judiciary a hard time to try and come up with a concrete case. Okay. I want us to talk about, you know, the, the same initiative uh, in terms of amending the constitution that we are seeing governors talking about, the Ugatuzi initiative, where they're saying they need more allocation to the counties. Do you think we need to fund the counties more or they need to first account for what we are giving them? Absolutely. It would be right if um, the governors uh, get more funds. But at the same time, they need to demonstrate on what they have done with, the, with what they have gotten. Because uh -huh. you see, there are very few, uh, there are very few counties that uh, would account, and not fully. Uh, either the, 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 the budgets are bloated and such like things. Uh -huh. So I believe the governors also, as a council of governors, they need to sit down and have some... Uh, measures or checks and balances within their caucus uh -huh. uh, before also asking for more. Uh -huh. As much as we would wish them to get more money, they also need to account for what they already uh -huh. got. Uh -huh. Do you see that the initiative going anywhere, the, the pushing for more resources and the referendum while at it? It's, it's hard to take sides eh, unless we have re read and seen what, what they're up to. And I will also ask them that, uh, you see, <coughs> let them not just bring... Uh, a, a, a suggestion will come up with a, a, a question that is only about funds. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. they should also come up with a structured way on how those funds should be used, how they should be disband, uh, dis, uh, dispatched to them, 
how the funds, uh, I mean, they should be allocated. Uh -huh. yeah, like you'd find maybe there's some counties that uh, agriculture is not the main thing and you find they have those budgets for agriculture and all that. They should come up with the clear percentages of what amounts would do what. Uh -huh. yeah. As ANC, do you support a change of the constitution? We would, because uh, actually in NASA, those are some of the things that uh, were in the manifest of NASA uh -huh. to change one or two things in the constitution. But uh, it's unfortunate that even the principle of NASA is like is abandoned. All that that was in uh, the coalition's wish and gone the other way. So is if NASA the current government, if uh -huh. the current government had come to speed and put Kenyans on the right track, maybe we would ask for those changes. There are one or two things that need to be actually uh, to, to have a referendum, uh -huh. but I believe it's not the right time. Uh -huh. well, what we, is it that you'd want to see changed perhaps in the constitution? Uh, the first thing actually that uh, Kenyans should look into is uh, this issue of election, because that's where the mess begins. Uh -huh. yeah? We end up with a, a messy election uh, we have people being killed, we have riots, we have people not accepting. We would like to have some, some regulations that when somebody, by the end of an election, uh -huh. one can shake another's hand and say like, ah, thank you, you've won. Uh -huh. I can bring in on, on board my ideas that were not in your manifesto. Uh -huh. yeah, of course, the devolution. We really need to put proper measures on devolution to make sure that devolution works. Uh -huh. yeah. So electoral we laws need, is one we, of the We things. need to have boards, yeah? uh -huh. a regulatory uh, authority on Kenyan borrowing. Yeah? We need to come up with proper laws that can guide the borrowing, of, uh, the borrowing of funds. We need to come up with the proper regulations that uh, would really assist uh, maybe the governors to mm -hmm. run the counties. So will you be coming with your own proposal or how are you going to affect those changes that you're talking about? Absolutely, as a party, we have mechanisms where um, it's unfortunate that parties were not involved in all this but as a party, uh, with party machineries, uh -huh. we'll look into all this. And maybe after we've gone through the three, uh -huh. the three formations, uh -huh. uh, we can give our contribution to it. Uh -huh. mm. Okay, you talked about NASA having been together. Is NASA still together? To my understanding, no one has uh, actually come up and... Uh, tried to... Okay, we just see maybe the Secretary General of... Uh, ODM trying to throw words here and there, like they are not in ANS, they are not in NASA and all that, but they have not done any uh, formal or official communication that they are pulling out. Uh -huh. Two is that um, uh, ODM has not been honest, like the political funding. Uh -huh. Yeah, they have gotten political funding that they, they ought to have shared with the other coalition parties, but all in all, they have refused, yeah. Uh -huh. mm. So the, the part, is it still together or, or you haven't quite As a coalition is still together. It's still together. Yeah, but what I would accept or rather what I would agree with all this uh -huh. is that uh, it's been long and it's been a while uh -huh. that uh, no meeting has been held. No meeting has been held. Mm. All right, I, I got to that because of what we are seeing happening currently in Kibera. We have a by-election that is coming up and each of the coalition partners is filled in their own candidate. Absolutely. Even in the last general election, each and every political party was filled in uh, its candidate. Uh -huh. You can take a situation of Mombasa where Waipa had uh, uh, Omar and uh, ODM had uh, Joho. Uh -huh. yeah. The same thing in uh, Vihiga, the background of the party leader, Salim Davadi. Uh -huh. We had, uh, ANC had its candidate, uh, Mashimiwa Chanzu, and ODM had uh, Otichilo. Uh -huh. and Otichilo clinched uh -huh. the seat. Uh -huh. So in all this, if you look, uh, there's no specific areas for specific people uh -huh. yeah, or for specific party. Yeah? As a coalition, there are areas where we put two governors. Uh, each party was, it was putting its governor or it was putting a, a, a parliamentary or a, an MCA uh -huh. or even women rep and senators. So basically, 
this is a competition within the, 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 the house. Within the house. Yeah. And aren't you likely then to perhaps lose as a coalition because you sort of say your vote will be divided among us all your... As ANC, we are very confident because uh, we looked into this thoroughly and we were very cautious on making on, uh, on our choice of uh, the candidate. And we believe the Kibra people um, are not just looking at uh, the parties or collusions and all that. I think they, they need a leader. It's not about tribal, it's not about party, but it's about a leader. And I believe our candidate, uh, Mr. Elio Owalo, uh -huh. uh, stands up to the task. It stands up to the task. Mm. Even as we go towards 2022, will the coalition still hold in your view, based on you know, the challenges that you're facing currently? Uh, now, if you look at the whole scenario, my party leader, Honorable Msalim Davadi, is the only last man standing in the opposition. And as you, you've known, the history of this country, every time there's rearrangement, huh. yeah? depending with the maybe policies and ideologies of each and every candidate who would wish to vie, or every party. And like-minded mind, parties maybe end up working pre- and post-election uh, coalitions. Uh -huh. So there's a lot to happen. Uh -huh. yeah. Where do you see ANC in all this? Will you be fielding, will your party leader be running for president? We've just seen Kalonzo Msioka saying that his party has endorsed him to run for president. You see, one thing I want to be very clear to Kenyans is that uh, we don't want to get into comedies where somebody declares to be a president to end up to be a senator. Uh -huh. Where somebody declares or declares his, uh, to be a president only to bring his party on board because uh, he wants to be at the negotiation table. Uh -huh. My party leader, Honorable Msaliam David, is very clear on this and very, very, very hands-on that on 2022, he's on the ballot. It's, on it's the only ballot. God that might stop him to be on the ballot. But if he's alive and healthy, he'll be on the ballot. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. You've talked about, you know, the electoral laws and the need for us to change them. And we've seen, you know, uh, what happened last week in Parliament, the IBC rules, uh, the issue about how we are going to be able to, to get commissioners uh, elected. If you look at the way IBC is currently constituted and the proposals by Parliament, mm. will that sort our problems when it comes to the electoral laws? Um, you see, we have a weak Parliament, I would say, where guys are not standing for their ideologies. You see, the psychophants of some parties, they are members of parliament who, I don't know how you should put it, but because of some committees they are, they are in, uh -huh. they, 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 they can't stand on their own because they feel if they go against the, this party's decision or they go against this party's decision, they'll be removed from some of those committees. And we've seen a few members being removed from those committees because they are not psychophants of some party leaders. Uh -huh. So we have a weak parliament, I would say. We, 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 you can't compare to this parliament as the, the parliament of, two, uh, of 2007, 2010, uh -huh. uh, where people were independent-minded and they would give their suggestion and contribute to the to parliament as part of the wish of the, the electorate. Uh -huh. mm. But we are the people who we elect. So are we then saying that the Kenyans are not electing people who represent their interests in parliament? Mm, I would say that, uh, especially in the last election, we, uh, many people tended to go with euphoria. Uh -huh. yeah. Celebrities, guys going for celebrities. And it's on record. Many parliamentarians have never even spoken in parliament. Uh -huh. yeah. Besides maybe being seen in public rallies, dancing, being in public rallies, abusing each other. Even some, some that we thought they were very brilliant young men. Yeah, they're in parliament, but we only see them throwing obscene, uh, obscene words. And, and it's so disgusting to the generation that if we continue going this way, then we would end up with a, a, a parliament of goons. Uh -huh. yeah. But as the public, you know, matured enough to know the leaders to elect based on issues as opposed to political parties and those kind of interests that you're advancing? These are the kind of changes we want to, to portray or to deliver in Kibra, uh -huh. where people are not looking at who is the best footballer, who is the best singer, who is more popular on those lines. We would like uh, a, a leader who can articulate issues 
on behalf of Wanaiji, uh, a leader who can bring motions uh -huh. that can really change and guide this country to the benefit of common Mwanaenji. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Political Parties Act had hoped that, you know, we were going to streamline, you know, the, the, the number of political parties that we have. Has it been able to do that based on, you know, what we are even seeing in Kibra, the number of contestants who are going for this seat coming from smaller parties, independent uh, I parties? I think uh, the new head of uh, political party is doing well. So far, if you look uh, at, at, at what she's tried to do, she's tried to streamline and bring political parties to line. But there's something that is really annoying. Uh, the tribunal, political parties tribunal, yes. it's turned into a group of thugs, yeah, where it depends on how much you have, yeah, for your case to be determined your way, of which me as a national party have had a case uh, before them about two times and uh, their behavior is unwanting. In fact, one thing we were contemplating is to do a special report uh -huh. to the Law Society of Kenya and uh, the Judicial Commission. Uh -huh. So how do we take care of the, you know, what you're saying is essentially corruption within the tribunal? How? Are you talking about corruption within the tribunal? Absolutely, the tribunal is totally corrupt. Uh -huh. And uh, we can present cases, uh, we can demonstrate how corrupt they are. Uh -huh. yeah. So how do we change that? <laughs> This is what I'm saying, that uh, the current government has put Kenyans into an awkward situation because open scenarios like that, they are not dealt with. Uh -huh. If I was the president of this country or if I was uh, the, a party leader of Jubilee today, I would advise my president to, to, to disband such like uh, commissions. Okay, our time is up, but I'll just give you a minute to give you a parting shot. Yeah. Your parting shot. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, actually, today as the ANC chairman, I would like to talk uh, to people of Kibra and tell them that they should really be sober as the decision they are going to make on uh, 7th of November is a crucial decision because that's the decision they will stay with for the next uh, three years. Um, on behalf of my candidate, Elio Dowalo, and the party leader, Honorable Msali Amdavadi, I would request them to vote for Walo come 7th of November. Of November. Mm. All right, thank you very much for your time. Of course, we've been talking to the NC chairperson, Kelvin mm. Lunani, just taking a look at the state of the nation, looking at uh, issues surrounding the push for a referendum, what is happening, of course, to NASA and the upcoming Kibra by elections that are on the 7th of November. This is where we put a cap on perspective, but of course, business news is up next, so stay tuned.